Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here, and it's time to review the $400 OnePlus 3. It has some pretty promising specs as well. I've had a lot of time with it, so lots to talk about, including a drop from pretty high up. So let's get started, full review of the OnePlus 3. Now I want to get started with design of the 3. You know, it's an all-metal body coupled with a 5.5-inch display, and to be completely honest, I really do like the design of this device. Now on the left side of the device, you have your volume rockers, which are very premium feeling, and you have an alert slider, which I really like where you can quickly go to priority notifications and also silent. You do have to actually pull it a decent amount to uh, actually get it to change. So I only found that I accidentally switched it just once in my pocket out of the, what, almost a month that I've used it, probably about a month actually. And it's got some texture as well, so you can grip onto it pretty easy and slide it and change your notifications. On the right side, you have a dual SIM card slot along with that power button, and that power button's in a very perfect location for me. It's actually uh, where I can rest my thumb, so it's very easy to press, or very easy to lock the screen. Now down at the bottom of the device, you have a couple of cosmetic screws, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, microphone, USB Type-C slot, which does include dash charge, which charges it extremely quickly, so uh, charging is very fast on this device. And you have a speaker, which quality is very average. It does get a little bit above average in terms of loudness, but the quality of it is just average. Flipping it over on top, you have absolutely nothing. However, here is what I'm talking about. Here is what that damage looks like to my drop, and it actually turned out fine. I mean, it has a little bit of an indent, a little chunk out of it, but I dropped it from pretty high up on concrete, and this is exactly what happened. So to give you an idea, it seems pretty sturdy, nothing to the glass on front, and just this little slight cosmetic damage on top in the upper right-hand corner. On the back of the device, you have a 16 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization, a flash, a microphone, and then just the OnePlus logo right there. You also have capacitive buttons and a fingerprint scanner home button. You have a back button, recent apps. You can customize those. I'll talk about that when I get the software. Then up at the top, you have your um, earpiece and also your front-facing camera. I also want to mention that OnePlus offers some back plates on their website as well to go with the device. So here's a look at some of them. If back plates aren't your thing, you can obviously snag a slick wrap, which is what I did to my device. Whether you want, uh, I use bamboo, you have cork as well, and a bunch of other options or natural series just launched for the OnePlus 3. I'll link to those in the description. I also want to talk about that fingerprint scanner on, f on the front of the device, and it works great. Absolutely no complaints about it. It's very accurate, very quick. As you can see right here, just blazing fast unlocking the device now I also want to make a mention that if you press a finger on there that's not registered it'll vibrate but it won't turn the display on so if you're interested in that so your display is not turning on accidentally however if you do actually have the display off and you use a registered fingerprint it's going to unlock it and turn the display on as I mentioned before it has a 5.5 inch 1080p display it's actually an optic AMOLED display so the blacks look very nice very dark obviously it's not the best AMOLED display out on the market for sure. However, it's still very good. I am very pleased with it. There was a software update recently, which actually made the colors a little bit more accurate. Looks a little bit better after that software update, but overall you're going to be pleased with it. Yeah, no, it's not a 1440p display. I kind of wish it was, uh, but as a 1080p display, it's solid. Um, outside viewing angles are good. Even brightness gets, gets bright enough as well. So overall you're going to be pleased with it. Uh, however, it's just obviously a little bit short of other flagships out there since it's not 1440p. The 3 has a 3000 milliamp hour battery. It's embedded, not removable. And here are some screenshots of my screen on time. You got 4 hours 35, 4 hours and 1, 4 hours and 5, 4 hours and 12. You see it's pretty consistent, 4 hours and 38, 4 and a half. So overall, I get above 4 hours screen on time, maybe, maybe about 4 hours and 15 minutes average. So it is solid battery life. Um, it's a little bit above average for me. I usually get about 4 hours as an average. So above that, it gets me through the day. Dash charge is great as well. It's a great addition. You can plug it in for 15 minutes and have a solid amount of charge. So battery life is not a complaint of mine. However, I do want to make note that with a 1080p display, I wish battery life was even a little bit better. Uh, hopefully they can utilize the display a little bit better in the near future and uh, battery life actually will get better. Moving along, let's talk about that 16 megapixel rear camera, which does have optical image stabilization. And right away, let's go ahead and focus and snap a quick picture. I believe HDR mode's on auto right now. But overall, snapping pictures is a breeze. It's very quick. It's quick to focus as well. I've been very pleased with this camera. Let's talk about the software. You have some toggles right here. You have this option, so time-lapse, slow-mo, photo, video, panorama. There's a manual mode as well, which a lot of people do ask about. So you'll see you can change it to auto. The exposure, your aperture, your ISO, all that can be customized to your liking just with the manual mode. And obviously with video, you do have 
Uh, 4K video recording as well. You can switch it to uh, 4K just by quickly tapping it right there. Add some grids, you can flip it as well. Now going back to the camera, let's go ahead and jump into some settings that you can see. It's very simple, save location, shutter sound, you can turn on and off. You do have raw image as well for those of you that do like to edit some photos. So very simplistic camera application, but it works very well and it takes some solid pictures. Now here's just a quick couple pictures I took in optimal lighting situations. And when you're in good lighting situations, it looks very good. You got a little exposure up in the upper left-hand corner here from the sun, but still overall, a very good looking picture. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one as well, a little bit further away. Captures a good amount of detail. It's very clear. I do want to make note that in lower light situations is where it might struggle a little bit. And struggle might not even be the right word because it still turns out very good quality. However, it's just not as good as maybe an S7 or a G5 in terms of comparing it to flagships. But overall, the camera has been very good. I've been very pleased with how pictures have turned out when I just point and shoot at various ones, especially in good lighting situations. So definitely uh, a solid camera on the OnePlus 3. Good job, OnePlus. All right, now I want to move on to one of my favorite parts of this device, and that would be the software, believe it or not. Uh, they have done a very good job with their Oxygen OS. I'm going to jump into settings, scroll down, go to About Phone. You'll see it's on Android 6.0.1, Marshmallow, the latest, uh, the latest version of Android, I should say. And like I said, they do have Oxygen OS skin, but it looks very similar to stock. Yes, you have some theme options, and this is a great one. You have a dark theme or a dark mode, I guess, when you go into settings. You'll see the pull down bar is dark as well. Uh, overall, a great customization option. Oops, I didn't actually mean to do that. And you can change the accent color if you want a specific one. Dark mode's enabled. Uh, you can change your LED notifications and your status bar if you don't want your Wi Fi icon to show up. You can go ahead and enable or disable that if you want to declutter your, uh, your icons up there at the top. Now, along with dark mode, as I mentioned, that pull-down bar is a bit different in terms of if there's no notifications like I don't have now, it goes straight to all of your toggles, which is a great addition because, of course, if you don't have any notifications, you want to go to your toggles. That's why you're pulling down your notification bar, and it does just that. There's also a great night mode enabled, which gets rid of any of that uh, cooler lighting, and it makes everything more warm and easier on your eyes, which I will turn on almost at night every single time. Jumping back into settings, you can also customize your buttons down here, your capacitive buttons. You can actually have on-screen buttons as well if you'd like. So if you're someone that wants on-screen buttons, you can go ahead and turn those on. I have them swapped, so recent and backs, back button is swapped. I actually like the back button in the bottom right. I might be in the minority there, but that's just me. Uh, backlight, and then of course you have some actions as well. If you long press a specific button, or double tap them, you can have them do specific actions such as voice search, open shelf, last use app, which makes it easier to actually multitask as well. And then pressing that recent apps button is where you can multitask, you can lock specific apps, press an X, you have a clear all button and a settings button as well. I'd like to talk about the launcher that comes with the device. Very similar to stock Android, you do have a vertical scrolling app drawer like so. However, they added something called shelf, which gives you some uh, weather information. You have a quick memo option, which is always nice to have just type a quick memo, some recent apps, frequent contacts. I turn that off just for privacy reasons. And then you can also add some widgets, and they're scrollable, as you can see. So you have a weather widget right here. You can actually swipe over to have show weather, use Celsius, or refresh weather as well. So Shelf's a nice option to have if you like their OnePlus launcher. And one more thing I really like about the OS is the gestures that you can customize. You have double tap to wake, open camera, flashlight, and music control. I really don't use the camera or music control option. However, double tap to wake and flashlight I use pretty often. Double tap to wake works pretty well. Occasionally you'll tap it and it won't turn on. However, the flashlight is a great option, a V, and it turns on that back LED light. And you can press type of V again on the display and you don't even have to turn your display on to toggle that flashlight. A really great option, I'll just be walking in the dark and I can quickly turn on the flashlight on and off. Now let's go ahead and talk about performance and some specs. Now it has the latest Snapdragon 820 processor which I have been very pleased with on every device I've used it. So if that gives you any indication, performance has been very good. It has the Adreno 530 uh, GPU as well, coupled with six gigabytes of RAM. The first device I have used was six gigabytes of RAM. And in terms of RAM management, it struggled a little bit to start. However, they pushed out an update and RAM management actually got a good amount better as well. So if you're gonna go ahead and attempt to do a lot of multitasking, uh, this actually is very future proof as well, considering it does, yes, have six gigabytes of RAM. Everything's very quick to load up in terms of multitasking and just overall general usage. When you go ahead and just open up an app, fire up an app or go home or go to your recent apps, really no stuttering whatsoever. They've done a very good job with optimizing the operating system with the specs and just making it overall very quick and flies right through the OS. 
All right, before I get into my final thoughts, I want to announce a giveaway of a custom slick wrapped one plus three from myself and obviously slick wrap. So I do want to give a huge shout out to them. They support my channel a lot and it actually allows me to do a lot more things, a lot more content for you guys and also hosting this giveaway, for example, as well. So huge shout out to slick wraps. I'll link to them in the description, but also I'll link to the giveaway as well. You just got to follow us on Twitter and also YouTube as well. So click that link to go enter. It's a, all, all through Gleam, all done through Gleam. So go ahead and do so, and you might win a one plus three customized by Slick Wraps. But anyways, let's go ahead and get my final thoughts of the three by one plus. And right away at $400, it is a fantastic device. Just an overall great phone fit into a more of a budget package in terms of it being way less than other flagships out there that you could potentially compare it to. Yes, you do have to sacrifice on the display a little bit, but overall design's great. It's comfortable in your hand. There's a little curve on the side that fits comfortably in your hand, a 5.5 inch display, which is nice, a little bit larger as well. That alert slider is great. And then of course, battery life is above average. That camera is definitely above average as well. The software is very defined. Its performance is fantastic. So overall, I just have a lot of very good things to say. I hope you see a theme here. It's not necessarily the top of the line in terms of the best phone out there. However, for $400, you get a lot more uh, for your money, I guess I should say. So that's really about it. That's my full review of the OnePlus 3. Highly recommended by me. Hopefully, they keep it updated to Android N once that drops soon. I will keep you guys updated on that. As always, I keep you guys updated with software updates on phones. So click that subscribe button. Go enter in that giveaway. You could win a OnePlus 3. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. All links in the description. And thank you guys for watching.